Hey, what's up? My name's Calvin Fisher, and today we'll be covering a game called Synced Off Planet. This video will be a bit different than the Dead Space retrospective I released earlier this week. Uh, instead, this is going to be a more just first impressions general video with a off the cuff commentary by yours truly. Um, so sit back and enjoy the ride. So, Synced Off Planet is a post apocalyptic third person shooter set in a world where nanobots have run rampant and I guess overtaken everything, hence the post-apocalypse. I wanted to cover this game because, as you might have learned by now, I'm a pretty big fan of post-apocalyptic settings and third-person shooters. The Division is one of my favorite games of all time, as well as games like Destiny, uh, Gears of War, Fallout, just anything in that sci-fi setting, especially post-apocalyptic games. Uh, so when this game was revealed at E3 a few years ago, I think maybe it was 2019, the game just really caught my eye. Again, it was just right in that setting. <laughs> I'm the target audience. They probably had a spreadsheet or something like that with just a fat picture of my face on it. So yeah, I was really intrigued. But after that initial reveal, it just seems like cover coverage for this game completely fell off the map. I hadn't heard anything about this game up until they just suddenly released a beta a couple weeks ago. It seemed like nobody had any coverage. There were hardly any YouTube videos or articles. I had no idea what this game really was now going into it. So I just wanted to create a video so anybody who was like me and interested and wanted to know more about the game could uh, check out this video and see if it's worth its time. Synced Off Planet is a free to play game. So this video will be focused mostly on whether it's worth your time to check out the beta or whenever the game does come out, whether to check it out in its free to play status. Because my opinion's always been that saving money is great, but saving your time and using it wisely is the most important thing. Um, so with that, <laughs> buckle up. Hey, we're getting into this video. Um, and I'm gonna start off with an overview. So when I first saw this game, I got the vibe that it was inspired by The Division, and that's because of, first of all, the post-apocalyptic setting, but just also how the UI was set up and how the gameplay seemed. But when I saw the opening cutscene for this game, I knew that this game really was taking a lot from The Division. If you're not aware, The Division opens up with a similar newscast. The newscasters are going over the outbreak and just the kind of downfall of civilization that follows. And Synced follows that exact same format. I think it worked a bit better in The Division because it was over a pandemic that broke out during Black Friday. And I think inherently, as the viewer, you just see how realistic that scenario is and how it could happen. So you don't have a ton of just questions that pop up. In this case, it's like, oh, nanobots have taken over and they were made by this company and now they're going hog wild and just society's downfalling but as the viewer you kind of wonder like how did this company just go rogue and get the license to have just these killer robots that come around it just doesn't work quite as well but i think overall it still works reasonably well. I kind of compare it of a Dr. Pib versus a Dr. Pepper, right? You're always going to take the Dr. Pepper. That's going to be the go-to. But if you're thirsty one day uh, and you have a nice cold Dr. Pib in front of you, you're still going to be chugging that thing like no tomorrow. So that's a kind of weird way of setting it. Um, but anyway, after this, we're dropped right into the tutorial. And if you're wondering what this game is, as I've said, probably at nauseum, it's a third person shooter set in a post-apocalyptic world. If you've played any games like Gears of War, or as I've mentioned again at nauseum, The Division, you're gonna feel right at home here. You've got all those sort of base third person shooter mechanics, looking over the shoulder, swapping shoulders, clicking to aim down sight, tap the control button to roll. All of it is really familiar if you have any familiarity with these types of games. It's a hero shooter, which I was a little bit disappointed by. I hoped you'd be able to create your own character. In this case, you can't. There's a set limit of five with various abilities. The guy I used with this old British geezer who healed people. Part of why this is kind of annoying too is you play the game in squads of three. And if there's only five characters to choose from, there's a lot of duplicates. Like I played so many rounds where I was the same old guy as the other two with the same glasses and bionic arm. And it just looks really weird. Like we all stormed out of the retirement home with an egg 
AK and an axe to grind. Probably had our nephews for just shoving us in this home with porridge to eat every night and late night television or something like that. But anyway, it just, I, I'm just kind of over the hero shooters in general. And I was hoping you could create a character, but that just wasn't the case here, but it's not that big of a deal. The X factor with the gameplay is your ability to sync with nanos. So what this lets you do is essentially have a guardian nanobot who is by your side and can perform various functions. I use the suppressor, which essentially I could aim him at a target and you would shoot blasts at it from a long range, which could be really effective in stunning other enemies and making sure that they wouldn't sort of encroach on me. There were other ones. Another popular one was the Seer, who, as the name suggests, would highlight the area uh, and alert you of enemies. This was really useful in PvP, which I'll get into. This mechanic is cool, and the animation to sort of sync up with the nano is really satisfying and didn't get too old. There's not a whole lot of tactical depth with using these nanos. Uh, it's pretty much just you hit the Q button and maybe aim at an enemy and hit the Q button again. You don't give them advanced orders. This isn't like a squad game where you're you know telling them to flank from the left side or cover this overwatch here or things like that um, it's a very simple mechanic but i think just based on the type of game this is having anything more would have been too much uh, so i think it works pretty well so first i'm going to cover dead sector which is a pve mode with roguelike elements in dead sector you clear out storm surges and kill the tyrant Storm surges are essentially clusters of enemies that you need to take out, and the tyrant is the end boss of the area. Meanwhile, there's a progressively intensifying storm which you and your party need to contend with. If the storm reaches 100%, you and your party start to take damage. Enemies drop currency, which you can then use to upgrade your weapons or get modifiers. Modifiers are things like spreading a stun effect between enemies if you hit their weak points, or making you reload faster, or unleashing an explosive effect when you reload. These modifiers can then stack on top of each other, so you might have, for instance, three stun modifiers that interplay well. Like one might spread the effect to nearby enemies, while another increases its damage, and things like that. So you can combine them and create sort of builds for your run. Unfortunately, they're not really all that necessary to min-max. It didn't feel like they had all that great of an impact on gameplay. This might change when you get to higher difficulties and higher dead sectors, but you don't really have the option of increasing the difficulty of a dead sector. You progress through them sequentially, you play the first dead sector, and then once you reach a high enough power, you go to the next and the next and so on. You can loot the area because it's open. It's essentially like a small battle royale map. The storm does corral you and make sure you're not spending forever just wandering around, but still, it can be pretty frustrating and feel aimless, especially when you just want to keep pounding through the area and beat it, while your allies want to spend forever just looking around and getting more ammo and loot. It's kind of like walking a dog. You know the path you're going on, you see it straight ahead of you, but you've got to wait for this dog to just meander from one side to the other. Maybe he'll spend a couple seconds sniffing, maybe the next couple of seconds he'll spend taking a piss, and you're just standing there, shivering, looking at the clouds, just wanting to be inside. That was a bit of a excessive metaphor, but I think it does a good job of painting exactly how it can feel sometimes playing this. It can happen the other way, right? Where you're the one who wants to spend a lot of time looting while your allies just want to keep pushing through the area. So it can be a bit weird if you and your allies aren't in sync with each other on how you want to go through the area and just the speed you want to progress. As you're playing through the area, you'll pick up character mods, which are permanent progression that you equip in the main menu outside of the game. Uh, these mods increase your overall power, which lets you take on harder and harder dead sectors, as I briefly mentioned earlier. So for instance, a mod might have 200 power points or 300 and they consecutively go up, where for instance, the second dead sector you need a power level of about 2000 in order to take it on reasonably. What that means is you run the same dead sector over and over. For instance, the first dead sector I ran probably five times before I had enough power to take on the second. Thankfully, the dead sectors between dead sector one and the second one you unlock are pretty varied with the landscapes and the bosses varying a lot, which eventually alleviates the repetition, but it doesn't get past the fact that you have to kind of grind the same areas over and over. 
this would be okay. Overall, a lot of games are focused on just a core gameplay mechanics, right? When you think about it, you're kind of shooting the same things over and over in most games. So I think the main downfall of Synced is the enemy design. The enemies just aren't all that interesting. For the most part, they just stand around and wait for you to shoot them. They can put on a bit of an offensive, especially when you get the more powerful Synced. But when I think in comparison to the division where the enemies flank you, and have some level of strategy that they possess, especially with the varying units who some are specially to charge you and others stay back more, for instance, the snipers. Um, just the tactics involved there, and especially that higher enemy AI where there is that level of coordination and strategizing against you makes things a lot more replayable in contrast to Synced where, again, the enemies don't really have that much intelligence they just loiter around or i don't know it's just it's one of those things you kind of have to feel it as you play it they just aren't that interesting even though there is a lot of variety in the types that you fight so because of that it makes the repetition all the more boring uh, just because the moment to moment enemies and opposition you faced isn't all that stimulating the tyrant bosses are pretty good though the first one you fight is this kind of rhino type creature who charges at you and you have to dodge out of the way and hit his weak points. Um, he also shoots up these spikes around the arena that you have to contend with. His insta-kill charge is pretty BS though. He'll just bowl you over in like one hit, even at full health sometimes. And which is how janky it can be sometimes where you feel like you dodge out of the way, but you don't and just get clubbed to the ground. That can be pretty irritating, but overall it's a solid fight. I don't have footage of the second tyrant you face in the second dead sector, but he's also a pretty good enemy. He has this poison effect as well as laser beams that he shoots, and it makes for a pretty varied encounter. Um, so the bosses I think are pretty solid. Overall, dead sector is a fairly solid mode. Again, the repetition gets to you after a while, especially because of that lack of enemy, I guess, intelligence, especially for AI enemies when you think about what a nanobot is. It's fun though. I think the farthest I'd go would be unlocking each of the dead sectors and playing them once. I think after that, the interest in playing it probably will fade, but I think that would give at least 10 hours of gameplay maybe even 20 hours of gameplay, judging how I'm five hours in and have just unlocked the second one. Um, so I think there is a good amount of fun to be had. The other main mode in Synced is Nerva Run. This is a PvPVE mode, which just for my sanity, I'm gonna call it PvP mode from now on. Pits four teams of three against each other for 12 players on the map in total. The goal of this is to get as many points as possible by holding spots on the map and killing enemies, be they players, or nanos. I thought this mode was very fun, and it felt like where a lot of the gameplay elements started to click with one another. The dumb enemy AI now feels like it has a proper place. It serves as a distraction from the other players and something to do in the meantime while you're not fighting other human beings. It feels like just the right amount of difficulty there. The time to kill felt just right for the other enemy players. It didn't take a ridiculously long time to down them, but at the same time, it took a substantial amount where it didn't feel like you would be sort of traversing around this area for 15 minutes and just get deleted out of nowhere which can be for a very frustrating experience in other games believe me you also get a respawn three times which i think is the perfect amount i like it because it makes death still feel costly because you only get three of these lives but it lets you come back instead of being kicked directly back to the lobby and having to load into another game you even get the opportunity to take revenge on the enemies that killed you i mean how many times in other games like a Warzone or Fortnite or something, are you domed by an enemy player and wishing you could get back at them but have absolutely no opportunity? This game gives you that opportunity, and I wish that was something that other games started to implement uh, because I think it's pretty cool. The map size here is perfect. You run into other enemy players probably every couple of minutes, which feels like the right amount where there's the tension of creeping around and taking out nanos and arming yourselves with then the explosive combat against an enemy team, while also not having these long stretches where you feel like you're just twiddling your thumbs for 15 minutes as other games can be. So the map size feels perfectly balanced for 12 players. The nanos are also used, but it seemed like by far the most powerful nano ally to use was Seer, who would essentially give you aim hacks through the walls, which could be really frustrating if you're on the receiving side of it, because you're just painted red, and it gives 
enemy such an advantage on you. In fact, when I was using this against an enemy team is the only time I wiped a whole team by myself. Speaking of which, I was just terrible at this mode. I was awful. But I kept hopping back in and wanting to play more rounds, which I think is a really good sign. The one negative of Nerva Run, and it's a really big one, is I didn't feel any sense of progression after the rounds. It was really lackluster. I don't think I really got anything after a match, which again, this is one of those where you're playing against enemy players and the best man gets the best rewards, but still, I didn't get anything. And even if you suck like me, it still would feel nice to have some token you'd get out of it. What's nice about this mode is that everything is level balanced and gear balanced, so everyone is on theoretically the same playing field. So there isn't any worry about pay to win, as this is a free to play game after all. And also just, you know, those level 1000 players just coming in and raking the noobs. Uh, it all feels pretty balanced. So overall, Nerva Run was a great mode, but because it lacked that sense of progression, I don't know if it had a super long term staying impact with me. It's something I definitely would hop into if I really get into this game when it releases. But yeah, this one had great potential. So when you're not fighting and you're not doing dead space, <laughs> dead space, gosh, I'm going crazy. When you're not doing dead sector and nerva runs and you're at the main base, uh, you are assaulted by progression systems. There's gear systems, weapon upgrades, season pass, login bonuses, just a whole gamut. And to be honest, when I see all this stuff, I just shut down as I do with most free to play games. Um, again, it has that really free to play feel where there are all these systems and they're really confusing. And yeah, I didn't really understand a lot of them, to be honest. And because nobody's covering this game, there weren't really any wikis I could check out. Again, this is just a first impression video. I didn't feel overly compelled to spend money though, is the biggest thing I'll say. In either the Dead Sector mode or Nerva Run, I didn't feel like the game made me pay money to progress, which is really big. Again, because it's a free-to-play game, I exercise caution. One big tactic in free-to-play games is to have everything progress really smoothly up until a certain X amount of hours in, and then things ratchet up and you just cannot progress without spending money. So it's really possible that this is a situation where that occurs. Um, so I don't want to say that with any, you know, assurances that this game will not be pay to win at release, but at least what I saw was a good sign. But again, because this is a free-to-play game, the time investment and whether it's worth your time is a more important question to me. So yeah, overall, I think there's a lot to do here and there's a lot of ways the game tries to make you feel rewarded for your actions, which overall I do appreciate. So now, it's time for my verdict of Synced Off Planet. Do I recommend this game? Well, that depends. If you love games like The Division and Destiny or Gears of War and are itching for something new to play that's similar, I recommend that you try this game out. I think there's a lot here for you to enjoy. However, this is the main person that I'd recommend this game to. The reason why is Synced Off Planet does come across as a bit derivative, and I think those games I mentioned, especially The Division, is an overall superior experience that, just due to the length of time that it's come out, the budget behind it, will offer you a lot better experience. So I think Synced is a game to come to if you've played similar games and kind of had your wear on them and are still looking for something in the same genre. I think that's sort of the niche that will really enjoy this game. But if you're interested in this genre of game, and haven't tried out those other ones, I recommend checking those out first and seeing if you like them. Then Synced might be a great game to come around to when the game is fully released. So yeah, with all that being said, thanks for stopping by the channel and checking this out. I hope that this gave you a bit of insight into Synced and whether or not to play it, and I hope the video entertained you a bit on the way. Please, if you like this video, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that YouTube stuff. Also, feel free to check out my links I've written a sci-fi series called The Northfield Saga, which if you love this genre of game, I seriously think is a series you're going to enjoy. It actually just won a couple of awards this past December, so super encouraged by that. Anyway, hope you have an awesome start to your year, and I'll be catching you soon. Peace out.